Greetings everyone, this is non-expert here and today we are going to be talking about the bridge pattern. Now before we jump right in, I don't want to preface this by saying that the bridge pattern is probably one of the most widely used patterns without people actually realizing that they've been using this pattern. So chances are that by the end of this video you would realize that you've been using this pattern all along. Or if you've not been using this pattern, I would highly recommend that you start using it. So without further ado, let's just start. So a bridge pattern comes from the structural pattern classification and the reason why we call it a bridge pattern is simply because it lets us bridge two classes together. Now the reason why a bridge pattern is actually really famous is simply because it's switching over from inheritance to something called as composition. Now if you're really not familiar with what composition is, just think of it as basically attaching a reference of an instance to one of your properties of your class. So let's just take a simple example to illustrate how a bridge pattern would be really beneficial for us. So let's just say that you have a geometric class with a pair of subclasses called circle and square. A small snippet of this can be seen over here. Now let's say in this hypothetical situation that we've been given so far, this has already been shipped out to production and it's been battle tested and we know for a fact that this works fine. But with all applications, we want to introduce new features to it. And the new feature that we want to create is that with every object that we have, we also want to incorporate a color with it. And the two colors that we want to incorporate are red and blue. Now, with a very inheritance specific approach, the way you would go about this is by creating multiple subclasses of your parent classes of circle and square, and basically creating a blue circle, a blue square, and a red circle and a red square. Now, you can see that that's actually not really scalable and code maintainability wise, it's just gonna be hell. However, we can see it right now and this is a very simplest example. However, whenever you have multi-line hierarchical like inheritance, this trap is something that most developers, you know, fall under. Now, the way to solve this problem is called the bridge pattern. Now, the way it's sort of attempting to solve this problem is just by saying that just get rid of inheritance altogether and start using something called as composition. And in proper terms, what it means is that you want to extract out one of the properties, which is the color property in our sense, and make its own separate class. So it would have its own state, it would have its own behavior. And this object is something that our class shape is going to reference to. And that's basically it. So if we know that this particular piece of code works for us, what we want to do is we want to incorporate a new class called as color and then sort of, you know, make its own individual entity and then go from there. So the way we would go about this is shown over here. Now, this is actually pretty straightforward. All I've done over here is basically made a class, an abstract class rather called color, which has an abstract method called get color. So, all the other classes that are implementing this class will have to make sure that they are you know um, implementing this method as well so then we just create two other classes called red and blue which basically implement on inherit from the color class and basically have their own function and simple print line for representing which um, object they're coming from now the way to incorporate this thing is the composition way is pretty straightforward. All you want to do is that whenever you instantiate any of these objects, you just pass that in as a parameter to one of the functions. And that's basically it. So whenever you pass that in, you want to make sure that that's being, you know, associated with your state or being saved in your state. And then you can just go from there. Now, there are multiple ways of, you know, doing that. However, the best way in this example would simply be to update the class shape um, and make its constructor sort of, you know, ingest that object. So the way you go about this is just by creating this constructor called, um, which we represent a bit in it and basically just taking in the parameter color, which we are assuming is going to be the object for now and basically attaching it as a property in our class. Now, what we, whatever we want to do with this, we can. And I'm just going to define this new function called print color. And all that print color is going to do is it's just going to use the instance that was, you know, given in our object. 
and basically call the get color function, which we know for a fact is always going to be implemented. So let's go ahead and implement these two things and implement this as well. And what I've done over here is nothing more than just, you know, create and instantiate our class objects, which is our object for red class and our object for blue class, and just pass in that instance over to our uh, circle class. And now whenever I call red display or red print color, it's going to have the right associations. So if I go ahead and execute this, you can see that the display is of the right shape and the color is also of the right color. Now, it's as simple as that. All you're doing is basically getting an instance and passing that over in some function, some way of form, so that that's maintained in its own state. And what that's allowing us to do is that we're not touching many of the other pieces which we know for a fact are always going to execute. And that's basically it. So let's take a moment and look at the applicability and all the advantages of using a bridge pattern. Now, applicability wise, if you didn't realize it yet, this is actually doing this in runtime. Now, with most like programming languages like Java, you would have your own separate compile time and runtime bindings, which actually have their own enhancements. And Python also has its own enhancements on it. But the fact that it's actually doing this in runtime is actually really beneficial for us. The second thing is it's actually allowing us to map classes pretty easily. Now, whenever you have orthogonality between your class hierarchies, you can use the bridge method to, you know, map these orthogonalities out. Advantages wise, you're always abiding to the single responsibility principle, which we mentioned before is actually one of the most important principle as we're decoupling and abstracting out one of the, you know, things from its implementation, just so that two classes could function independently of one another, and they could be their own separate entities. The other advantage is that we're following the open close principle. And the reason why it's not violating this principle is simply because we can introduce new abstractions and implementations which are independent from each other, like we did over here. So whenever we want something else, like if you want to draw a function or if you want something else, it would actually function independent of this thing. And that's basically it. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you did like this video, do give a like and do consider subscribing to our channel. We have discussion over here and we would love to have you on board with us. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. And I look forward to speaking with you guys later. Thank you and have a nice day.